They're back. As you know, I bought some single action shooting society Ruger New Vaqueros late in 2020. And you really have to watch the episode where I decided to purchase them to know why I also decided to have them all slicked up and tricked out. All the other revolvers I've shot in this sport up until now were all straight out of the box stock revolvers. So I wanna make it real clear early into this episode that you don't need to have your guns all slicked up like this to win at this sport or to be competitive in this game and especially just to have fun. I've won plenty of state championships and even a regional championship with my box stock Uberti 1851 Navy revolvers. But if you can afford to have your revolvers professionally tuned up, or if that's how you wanna play the game, that's fine also. Play the game your way, let others play the game their way. So again, just to reiterate, so there's no confusion down in the comment section. The extra expense is not a necessity to play in the sport of cowboy action shooting. It's already an expensive sport just to buy all the equipment needed. I don't wanna scare anyone off thinking that they also need to buy race guns to have fun and be competitive. Now, about these Sass Ruger New Vaqueros of mine. I had the shotgun boogie short stroke kit put in by my pard Shalico at Desperado Cowboy Bullets. This kit includes a new hammer, trigger, pawl, and a bunch of new springs, as well as a half cock notch. And I'll give you a little bit more detail on all of those parts and what they do as I understand it during the course of this video. Be advised though, I'm not a gunsmith. I have a good working knowledge of how these firearms function, but I might not be the best at explaining the technical aspects of all of these parts. I'm just a gunfighter, what can I say? Also, having work done to your revolvers won't necessarily make you any faster with them. Although in this case, especially when comparing them to my 1851 Navy revolvers, there is much less of a reach for the hammer. And because the geometry of that hammer has been changed, there's far less movement required of that hammer to put it in the fully cocked position. And that does quite literally save time in probably fractions of a second, but that may make the difference between winning or losing. And that is important to some folks in this sport. For me, it's like having a short stroke rifle. I can't always go fast with the short stroke because I can't always see the targets through the smoke. But having that short stroke rifle does keep me smoother more steady and on target, and smooth does translate to fast, or at least faster. Now the big benefit of having the half cock notch on these revolvers, especially for a gunfighter like me, is in the event of a slip hammer, where your thumb slips off the hammer before getting it all the way fully cocked, you don't have to run the cylinder fully back around on these revolvers to get to that next shot. Just reach up, cock the hammer, and it's on the next round ready to be fired. Any gunfighter or duelist shooter, someone who is using one hand unsupported to both cock and fire these single action revolvers knows just how long it takes to go all the way back around to get to that unfired round that was skipped because of a slip hammer. In those situations, the half cock notch is a game changer and a game saver. Now, as I mentioned, the geometry of the hammer on these revolvers has been changed so that the cylinder turns faster. That also means that the hammer falls a shorter distance to reach the firing pin. That's why the springs have to be changed. There still needs to be enough energy delivered to that firing pin on that shorter hammer fall to set off the primers. The transfer bar is also removed because it would rob some of that energy from the hammer fall. And without the transfer bar, these revolvers need to be on half cock in order to load them, just like a Colt. If not on half cock, the firing pin will be protruding from the frame and it will prevent the cylinder from rotating 
once that first round comes in contact with it. And that's about as technical as I'm going to get today. I hope I've explained it in a way that you understand without being too technical and boring to folks who just really don't care about such things. I find the invention and the technology behind it kind of fascinating. For the footage that you've seen today, I've paired these 38 Special Sass Ruger Vaqueros with my SKB 200E and my 1873 short rifle chambered in 4440. And I'm planning on purchasing an in the white 1873 rifle with a half round, half octagon barrel to go with these revolvers. I've even made space for it on my gun wall. I'm just waiting for that particular rifle to be back in stock. For now, let's just put them all together and watch them run. Here comes trouble. Stand by. What the heck? <laughs> right time to the two five nine nine. Down. Boy, that is dead. Grab up your long guns. Write this time down. 3063. Three, 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 ain't bad. Clean and dirty kind of way. Thank you, thank you. I'll take that. Absolutely. Well, they did it. They didn't need any cleaning. I mean, other than I cleaned them on the first stage. Other than that, though, I mean, they ran like a charm. I probably didn't even need to clean them. I think they were opened up enough. But boy, are they dirty. Oh, did you see it? Uh-huh. Yep. I was just saying that they sure did get dirty. That stainless gets black. Thank you. I'll show you the rifle here real quick. Well, I gotta give a big thank you to Shalico for tuning these things up. Y'all give Shalico a big thumbs up for his work on these revolvers. It's nicely done. So there you have it. A look at my Sass Ruger New Vaqueros on the range. If you like this episode, be sure to give it a thumbs up by smashing that like button. And if you just found this channel because of this episode, be sure to subscribe and stick around to see more of me running these Rugers. At this point, if my new leather form arrives in time, I do plan on running them at the Washington State Championship match. Also, if you enjoy content like this, anything related to firearms, please consider supporting this channel at www.buymeacoffee.com slash JediTV. Unfortunately, YouTube often removes any ad revenue from these types of videos, even if they do follow the community guidelines. So having fan support financially is helpful. Of course, it's here for free, but the support is appreciated, even if it's just sharing a link to this video. 
it all helps. I'm Jed, this is Jedi TV, and I'll see you in some other place in some other time.